I'm Steve Conway, Senior Vice President of Research for Hyperion Research. We're an analyst firm that tracks the global high performance computing market and all the technologies needed to support it. And I'm Beth Langer, Senior Design Engineer and Technical Lead for Thermal Management Division within CPC. Today we're here to talk about trends in liquid cooling. So Steve, why has liquid cooling become such a trend in high performance computing? mainly because the computers have gotten so much bigger and more powerful and denser uh, in the past years. Um, you know, the top 500 computers in the world, the supercomputers, uh, get closely tracked. And over the past 20 years, the average one of those has gotten 20,000 times more powerful. And so they generate a lot of heat. Uh, the parts can get as hot as a space capsule and re-entering the Earth's atmosphere more than 3,000 degrees. Uh, water, other liquids, much, much more efficient than air to cool these computers. Uh, water is 24 times more efficient than air in cooling. And for the same volume, water uh, can hold 3,200 times as much heat as uh, air can. What differences do you see in adoption of liquid cooling systems across the U.S. and other countries? It's not much different. This is a, a worldwide trend. So it, it's pretty much the same all over the world. The trend is that now only smaller computers can be air-cooled. Anything that's of any real size needs liquid cooling. How real is the idea of data center hydrophobia? It used to be a big problem years ago. It was devastating when it happened because uh, you could lose data, you could lose the machine itself, which is very expensive, and your researchers at very high hourly salaries could be sitting idle for days while repairs happen. Uh, now there are vendors who have more than 40 years experience in some cases with designing parts for liquid cooling and whole liquid cooling systems just for high performance computing and other big data centers. Uh, the, 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 there are extreme challenges there in heat, pressure of the liquid going through, the chemical consistency and so forth. So the real challenges today are different. The challenges today have to do with these systems being very, very much larger in size. So the cooling systems also have to be larger. Lots more connections, um, lots more passages and so forth. And the systems are also modular. So that means that you know when you add to a system, you have to have disconnections happening uh, in order to uh, attach the additions. And uh, when repairs do happen, though they're not very frequent, you may have to shut down a part of the system. So things like quick disconnects become very, very important. Uh, the disconnects have to not only you know, reduce the time, the downtime for uh, the system or part of the system, but they also have to be built to last for years under these extreme conditions of heat pressure and uh, chemical uh, uh, consistencies. How easy or difficult is it for HPC manufacturers to deploy liquid cooling systems? Most of the companies and other organizations and government and academia and so forth uh, that use high performance computing have done that for years. And so they're aware of the options. They know that there are trusted vendors out there um, who can help them and, and what their products do and so forth. But the market has been expanding very, very quickly. So there, every year there are hundreds of new companies that are adopting high performance computing for the first time. Um, they're realizing that to outcompete their rivals, they have to outcompute them. Um, and they are not aware of the choices in the marketplace and need to be educated. So, based on your experience and your research, what advice would you give to HPC manufacturers and data center operators when they're looking to design and implement successful liquid cooling systems? Well, they really need to do their homework because there are differences among the manufacturers there. Um, some have products that have proven to be better than others. Our research shows that uh, people talk to their peers, they talk to the manufacturers and so forth. You need to find uh, suppliers who are very familiar with HPC data centers, uh, the flow rates, 
the extreme heat, the pressure, the fact that they need integrity, these systems for a decade or more in some cases. It's most important though, for new adopters of high performance computing uh, who are not as familiar with the choices that are out there in the marketplace and they may be running HPC or artificial intelligence or big data and so forth. And they need to be especially careful and do their homework. How easy or difficult is it for data centers to implement liquid cooling systems in their facilities? Well, it, it used to be that data centers had to be built from the ground up for liquid cooling with raised floors so that the cooling equipment could uh, be installed underneath. That's no longer true. Now there are multiple options for retrofitting data centers that don't have raised floors. They could have the cooling systems outside of the data center and pump the coolant in. Um, there are also immersion uh, computers, liquids that uh, can cool individual computers and so forth. But the real trick is that for all of these systems, they've gotten to be very big on average and they've gotten to be very complex. So uh, installation, repair, addition, all of those things have to be quick and simple. So you need things like quick disconnects in order to do that. Steve, thanks so much for your time today and sharing your insights. Oh, glad to be here. It's going to be very interesting to see where liquid cooling technologies go in the future.